Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company, the auto shop of the future. Today we would like to talk to you about the first generation Teslas, the Roadsters, and overheating problems. Tesla realized shortly after release of the Roadster that they would not work well in high temperature climates and go into power limiting mode. Jameson Cummings, the first Tesla tech hired, who was featured in one of our recent podcasts, was actually sent to Dubai along with a German Roadster engineer to work on an overheating Roadster, which was routinely going into power limiting due to their 110 Fahrenheit plus temperatures. With a recent nationwide heat wave in the United States, we are seeing similar feedback from Roadster owners in some of the states. To help us isolate vulnerability and sources of heat in a Roadster, we began using thermal imaging equipment on Roadsters. We find that the 1.5 PEMS, the first generation VINs 1 to 500, seem to run hotter than the next generation redesigned 2.X PEMS. And you can see this camera will give you a pretty good heat signature of where the hot spots are. We also determined that there are ways to reduce the buildup of concentrated heat loads in a Roadster, which include open the trunk lid when charging. Airflow is already compromised around the power electronics module during charging, and hot air swirls as the PEM tries to cool itself. Opening the trunk allows air to move freely and create more of an exchange. Your Tesla Roadster has a coolant level reservoir that sits on the passenger side rear underneath the rear trunk lid. Tesla uses a 50-50 mixture of distilled water and propylene glycol antifreeze. The Roadster uses a very specific coolant type, Sierra Propylene Glycol, which has a fluorescent green color. Xerox G48 ethylene glycol coolant is more commonly used in the newer Tesla models and has a dark blue color. Should not be used, however, and blended with the existing coolant in a Tesla Roadster. Now, low coolant levels in a Tesla Roadster can overheat the APS units, which is the DC to DC converter inside a Tesla Roadster battery pack. We have had this DC to DC converter fail with blown MOSFETs due to overheating. Maintaining this part is crucial since these have been out of production since 2008 and will never go back into production. Another thing that helps Roadsters survive heat is replacing the coolant pump, which normally resides in here on the passenger side rear quarter panel. This is a 12 volt DC brush motor pump which lifespan is probably only good for about five years or so. Many of these roadsters, especially the first generations, are going on 14 years. It's a good idea to replace this pump because when it fails, it's going to reduce the gallons per minute that it puts out and compromise cooling. This is the pump that maintains the temperatures in the ESS pack, and it runs whether you're driving the car or not. Please refer to the link down below that takes you to our shop page where we show the insides of one of these when they fail when we do an autopsy. Another way to help reduce heat in the Roadster is keep the garage door partially cracked when you're charging at night. The amount of heat buildup in a garage, one or two car garage, is substantial and the Roadster would definitely be able to charge much cooler if there was some airflow. And finally, Consider putting a window air conditioner in your uncontrolled garage storage space. With Roadsters moving into collectible status, protecting this appreciating investment is worth a few hundred dollars. Some of the healthiest CAC values we have seen from Roadsters, and that is a measurement of the health of a propulsion battery in a Roadster, are from Roadsters that have come in for service, the ones that came from environmentally controlled Roadster storage spaces. Although not specifically heat related, as your Roadster main battery ages, use only the yellow charge cable for maintenance charging. With aged ESS main battery packs now marginalized with many approaching 14 years, a slow charge method is less stressful. We do not recommend using the Tesla Roadster storage mode charging ever, since it will maintain the state of charge at very low levels and the distance from this level to bricked status is fast and brief if there's any problem with the charge system, such as you're on vacation or the roadster's left unattended for a few weeks. We also recommend replacing the 15 amp GFI plug on the end of the yellow charge cable. 
every five years. We have a link down below where you can buy this plug and replace it yourself. We have seen a lot of Roadsters brick because when that plug fails and charging is interrupted and you're on vacation, weeks or months could go by before anyone notices. And finally, we are working on an engineering change to the Roadster Power Electronics module to reduce the impact of high heat areas in the world. While repairing and rebuilding an early Signature 100 Roadster Power Electronics module, we found inside the PEM a message from a couple of technicians that basically said this PEM was modified with hot weather thermal limits. Reverse engineering this PEM revealed some bias resistors that were changed and replaced in certain areas of the power electronics module. We are aware of no literature, schematics, or test procedures from Tesla documenting this engineering change order to resolve overheating in a PEM. So we have begun to create documentation. We will be testing this and verifying that this engineering change order is legit and a fix for certain high temperature situations. Thank you for joining us for another Tesla tutorial video. Leave your comments or questions below in the video. I'm Pete Gruber. See you next time.